Greetings all, this is Dickie Adams with PocketNow.com, and today we're taking a closer look at the software on the HTC Flyer from T-Mobile. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. One of the most commented upon items of the HTC Flyer is this home uh, lock screen ring that you have when you uh, turn the device on and you drag the ring up into the center of the screen, that's how you unlock it. But more importantly is that it gives you the ability to drag icons down into the ring in order to be able to launch apps. So if I wanted to launch the calendar, I would drag it down here and release and it would launch the calendar app for me. And when you have appointments come up, then you can drag the dismiss or the snooze icon to that ring as well. If you turn it to portrait view, then you get the same effect except the ring is, you know, in the at the bottom of the screen still, except you've got the bigger view. Go ahead and unlock here. So this is the HTC Sense for uh, the HTC Flyer, and uh, you can see with the weather effects there, which is pretty typical for HTC uh, products. Down here across the bottom, we've got our our launcher bar here with our app launcher, the notes feature, reader. Uh, watch and then the personalized button down here and these can be customized uh, as desired. If you scroll across then it swipes uh, through the multiple pages and you can see the white icon down here scrolling as well. And if you give it a good spin then it spins really fast and it rotates around. If you pinch into the screen then you can pick the home screen that you want to navigate to. Now the HTC Flyer is running Gingerbread and they've got a little kind of a custom layout uh, as you can see here. Oops, let's try that again. So 2.3.4 and it's running uh, 1.0 of HT Sense for tablet. Now there is talk that this device might actually receive honeycomb but since Ice Cream Sandwich just came out it's more likely that it's going to receive ice cream sandwich before it receives honeycomb and on Google Plus one of the HTC employees did mention that the HTC flyer would be on the list for that. Then again, we'll see how that actually pans out when it comes out. So starting down here with the notes functionality, uh, this is a kind of a custom version of the uh, Evernote application. And if you're using the pin tool, which I've got here, uh, if you tap, you can actually use the pin functionality to actually make notes on the screen. Now, because this is uh, running gingerbread and not honeycomb or ice cream sandwich, this uh, pin stylus, which we'll cover a little more in the hardware view, doesn't actually work with the rest of the, the buttons and the tools. So if I go up here to attach, it doesn't actually work. If I flip it over uh, and use the metal end here, I can get it to do other uh, functionality, like uh, tap up here under the title and actually be able to uh, work on it that way. But otherwise, this just works in uh, the modes such as the note or the screen capture mode, which will, uh, the, or rather the kind of the scribble mode, which we'll cover in a second, it has to do with this this button here. Uh, as far as the pin app is concerned, you can tap on the uh, option you tap on the actual pin here and you can change the options such as color and and erase and uh, these allows you to choose a different pin style so we've got an eraser a highlighter a um, kind of a purple marker of sorts I mean you can change the color but it's currently a purple marker a uh, nib pin uh, a brush uh, this is a standard pin, and then uh, a pencil. Really, I haven't, I haven't found that these do a really great job of um, allowing you to write clearly. The edges are really grainy and, and jittery. It, for taking a quick note, it's fine, but for, actually, for actual art, it's not a very good uh, configuration. Now, in Honeycomb and Ice Cream Sandwich, the pin functionality is supposed to work across more apps. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able, to see, be able to see the fun pin functionality work in apps such as uh, Sketchbook. Uh, but for right now, the, the default pin functionality is not all that uh, fantastic. If we go back here to this the main screen and I tap the pin button which will cover more in the hardware review as well I can go into a scribble mode which takes a capture of the the screen as you see it and then you can doodle on the screen or erase by holding down the white button 
and then save that capture as something else. So you could do the same thing with a, a PDF document. You could create your own JPEGs of um, uh, grid paper and that sort of thing. Take quick notes with if you wanted to. You could you know screen capture and there's a couple of apps that allow that sort of functionality available in the market, but not by default. And as you can see here, I'm tapping on the discard button, but it doesn't actually do anything. Uh, if I flip it over, it will, but that's uh, no different than me tapping it with my finger. The reader app is akin to the, like a Kindle app or the iBook store in uh, Apple products. It is a very uh, straightforward reading application with a page turn uh, animation effect and it flips back and forth very easily. You can change things like font and uh, brightness and screen res uh, or um, screen settings like uh, a night view and uh, that sort of thing. So it, it actually works pretty well and it's kind of HTC's own uh, little uh, reader application. You also have the ability to go in and watch videos uh, if you pay for them. It's a little bit like Amazon's movie store or the Apple movie store. It's just another way for HTC to kind of get some uh, additional funds out of you after you buy a product. But um, it, really this screen does a pretty good job of displaying video format. I've got Netflix loaded on here and, and it works just fine. I actually haven't used, uh, purchased any videos. There, I wasn't able to find any uh, videos that were available for free at first glance. We go over here to new releases, we can see uh, we've got things like Rango and if I tap on this, then it gives a buy price of $14.99, but there doesn't, there's not a rental price listed here uh, for a uh, just an easy view uh, rather than spending the money for a full uh, version. Another app that a lot of people have a tendency to uh, use right away is the, uh, the uh, Snap Booth app, uh, which gives you the ability to take pictures of, of your face using the front facing camera or other devices, kind of like Apple's uh, Photo Booth as well. That's a lot of one item that a lot of people, as soon as I hand them this device, that they have a tendency to just jump right into. Uh, when you go into personalize, then you have the ability to set the scene, which changes some of the buttons and the layouts, the skin, the wallpaper, lock screen, add widgets back and forth, uh, default the sound sets, set alarms, that sort of thing. The market is actually still the older market version, even though it's running gingerbread. Some of the other uh, functionality here that's kind of interesting is the uh, dock mode, uh, which gives you the ability to if you have a, the actual dock for this device, then it can launch this mode automatically where you can uh, go and turn on the uh, brightness level. You can barely see the clock up here, but at night that would be uh, very visible still. There's a car dock if you have the um, car uh, accessory that gives you uh, the ability to have like destinations and footprints, the history of where you've gone, marking locations, uh, that sort of information. Uh, one item uh, of note here is the press reader, which gives you kind of a um, being able to read uh, newspapers. Uh, I've got the Los Angeles Times from a, a couple of days ago loaded here. And you can see, you can scroll through the newspaper and it's got the articles. And then if you tap on the, the uh, headline, then it takes you into this text mode and you can actually read the article uh, without some of the pictures. It, what I thought was really funny about this is it actually has all of the um, advertisements if we tap and hold the home button, then we get the recent apps as you would expect. There is a task manager that allows you to control uh, what apps are running and, and actually kill all of the applications if you so desire to kind of free up some memory. There is this connected media piece here, which is kind of a DLNA uh, connected device setup that can stream media, but it's not exactly like the Windows Media Center uh, connected devices configuration. Uh, you have to do some little setup to little magic on your own end to make that work. In the status bar menu here, uh, as you can see here in landscape format, we've got a split view here and we can see the most recent apps. Uh, we can clear the, the notification area and then we've got some quick settings over here which allows to toggle on uh, Wi-Fi on and off, to toggle the mobile network on and off and actually go into the the uh, full settings uh, very quickly. If you switch into uh, landscape mode then down here at the bottom that turns into two different tabs uh, for that functionality. Overall the OS is very snappy. It 
feels very quick. I've had very few crashes, although I have had some coming out of an application. It'll uh, reload sense is where the, the crash generally occurs. Uh, coming uh, specifically out of Google Reader is where I find it happens the most. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why. Netflix was able to load on here with no problem. I was also able to get Skype working uh, with video and with audio. That wraps up our closer look at the software on the HTC Flyer from T-Mobile. If you have any questions or comments about the software functionality on this device, leave them below and we'll try to cover them. Thanks for watching.